So blasphemies now plague all the realm. It will only get worse if what Father said is true, as it did in Amarot. If that's our model, then shouldn't we expect the effects to grow more severe as it feeds off its own spread? As if people transforming into those monstrosities wasn't bad enough. If the flora and fauna, if the land itself turned against us. No one would survive. Here's your order, friend. May you find comfort in these dark times. Where do we go from here? If there's one thing we've learned, fighting blindly and simply reacting to what comes will accomplish nothing. We must find a solution that addresses the fundamental cause before our strength is exhausted, before this crisis spirals out of control. Is there something, anything we've overlooked? If there is an answer, Hydaelyn herself will have it. Twas she who bound Zodiac and forestalled the final days. Alas, we have heard naught from her since the Tower of Babel. Whether she cannot or will not speak, I can only speculate. Even the flower she gave us is no more. So advised the Watcher. But what could be the significance of that name? It is entirely unfamiliar to me. To me as well. It meant something to the ancients, though. In our time. Most surely. Yet I do not recall a single mention of it in the records of Anida. Another dead end. And quite literally. It's not as if there are any ancients living we could go and ask. Not alive as such, but not quite dead. Elidibus. I sealed him in the white horosite of the Crystal Tower back on the first. Contained within that reservoir of ether that maintains it, ether that is returned little by little to the sea, naught may remain of his soul. However, if part of it lingers, we might be able to speak with him there. I know we can no longer make that journey, but you, my friend, still can. Thank you, my friend. That would mean much to me. If nothing else, should we learn the first is safe, we'll have that much more reason to keep fighting the good fight. That said, the odds are not in our favor, to say the least. Which is why we're fortunate to have Uriange up there on the moon, working hard to make all the necessary preparations for our departure, should it come to it. And why we have nothing to lose by staying the course till the last instant. Indeed. To the last, let us all do what we can. I will consult with Master Matoya and see if she knows of a way to reach Hydaelyn from the Ethereal Sea. 
and I will visit the nation's leaders and attempt to ascertain how far the final days have progressed elsewhere. Keep me abreast of your findings. I can seek out and slay the worst of the immediate threats, but only to slow the spread. Unease, terror, despair. Try as we might to suppress them, these emotions will return to harry us time and time again. But when they do, remember this. Your friends and loved ones are out there somewhere, sharing in your struggle. You are not alone. So ends the brief respite before the next revelation. Yes, so much left for you to see. Where beginning ends and end begins.
Biometric authentication complete. Please state your business. Acknowledged. Reinitializing Sitka's tower systems. Searching for Elidibus entity. located in subterranean core power accumulator projecting image my home my friends no more than a dream oh. You. Why have you awakened me? I no longer sense those places beyond. Or Lord Zodiac. You must explain all. So, he is fallen, and my brethren's souls returned to the star. The doom we sacrificed so much to prevent is come again. Old burdens now yours to bear. But if this is Van Daniel's design, then I, as Elidibus, have a duty to fulfill. Your unsolicited act has restored to me some few memories of the Convocation. 
Such knowledge as I have, I will share. Why apologize for receiving a favor of the defeated? If it sits ill, consider it payment for freeing Lord Zodiac from servitude. Where to begin? Ah, the end. Your understanding of what caused the final days is consistent with our own. The decay first took root where the currents were weakest. Yes, a conclusion drawn by him, Fan Daniel. Not the him of here and now, but as I knew him, long, long ago. Having shed light upon the phenomenon, he dedicated himself to devising a countermeasure. Were it not for his knowledge of the Celestial, we would never have made the connection, and thence forestalled the final days. And though he inherited that noble soul, how different this last incarnation, so consumed by self-loathing and hate. Elpis. Yes, the name is familiar to me. Yet I know it not as a flower, but a place. A testing facility for determining which of our creations were fit to be released into the world. Many worked there, and before joining the Convocation and assuming the title of Fan Daniel, he was their chief. He was Hermes. That is all I know. The crystals tell little of the lives the Fourteen led prior to their induction. Elpis itself would tell even less. Nary a ruin has survived. Wait. I saw you there. In Elpis. No. I did not. But I did. I did. A lingering trace of impossibility. And a truth that fills my heart. My memories remain clouded, I fear. However, they have revealed to me one possible course. You must travel to Elpis, to the time when Hermes served as its chief. In glimpsing the Exarch's memories, not only did I make his summoning magic mine own, I also mastered the workings of this tower, which, having absorbed my empowered essence, now harbors an abundance of energy. As such, I believe I can deliver you unto the past, unto that place and that precise moment. Given the eons that must be traversed, the gateway will not be fully formed. Your form will be less tangible still than those warriors of light I had summoned. In all likelihood, none will be able to see or hear you. Yet even should you manage to interact with others, you will be unable to affect meaningful change. For the reality you wish to save, the reality to which you must return, exists as a result of the final days. 
You cannot reshape the past to undo the tragedies of the present. Cannot unmake the sorrow and suffering fated to come. In full knowledge of this, will you still entrust your life to your foe and make the journey? Very well. I shall cast you unto the river of time. Let this be my final act. You must input the commands. I no longer have the authority. First, you must reconfigure the systems, that the tower's ether may be channeled for the magic. The preparations are complete. The gateway will soon open. Return at once to the ocular. All appears to be in order. The ether flows unimpeded. The magic should consume every last moat of my essence. Why are you surprised? Did I not say that this will be my final act? Lord Zodiac is no more. There is nothing for me here. The ones I love and long to see again are waiting in that promised land beyond memory. And dream. Now go, warrior of light. Go, and do not look back. Well, Hydaelyn. I take my leave of you. Yours is the mantle of the last of us. May you have the joy of it, the burden and the solitude. It falls to you now. You and your champion to save our star.
And here we are, Elpis. Well, well, how rare to receive you in person. To what do we owe the honor? Oh, just a few odd tasks. We'll be here a while. You're welcome to stay as long as you see fit, of course. As a matter of procedure, however, I must ask that you kindly remove your masks. Come now. Is this truly necessary? Surely you can tell who we are. Who you are, perhaps. But I am far less infamous. Regardless, if we do not follow protocol, it is our hosts who would be held accountable. So, please, do favor us with your handsome face. Satisfied? I thank you for your cooperation. You are free to go about your business. By the by, you see it too, yes? I haven't the foggiest what you're talking about. Hmm. That's odd. It's right here. A bit thin in the ether, but there's no mistaking it. The color of its soul is almost identical to Azem's. Do you suppose he created it? Rather unusual for a familiar to have a soul, though. Don't ask me. All I know is that it's trouble. Doubly so if it's his spitting image. So let's leave it be. Come now. Hmm. It's trying to say something. But it's literally too intangible to form words. Why don't you give it some ether? Spare a snifter of your bounteous reserves. Who do you take me for? Why, a dear friend, of course. One who wouldn't let acts of kindness, such as my accompanying him on errands to far-flung outposts, go unrewarded? <sighs> I suggest you close your eyes, or this may be unpleasant. You may open your eyes. Oh, you even adjusted its size. The better to indulge your whim. This way, it will be easier to communicate. 
how very thoughtful of you. And may I applaud your artful reinforcement. Without further ado, then. Greetings! I am Hithlidaeus, chief of the Bureau of the Architect. Sulking beside me is the most honorable Emmett Selk of the Convocation of Fourteen. And how might we address you, my new friend? A fine name. And I'm pleased to see you understand our words. So, tell us, whence have you come? The thinness of your essence suggests you weren't created here. You do not know? Or cannot say? Hmm. Allow me to ask a different question, then. What brings you here? Well now, the same as us. Perhaps Azim wished to come too, but had to settle for a familiar. If he truly wished to be here, then he would be. Right you are. My apologies if we've given offense. The two of us can discern the color of souls, you see. And yours happens to resemble that of a friend. And with your purpose matching our own besides, we jumped to a hasty conclusion. We are here to speak with Hermes, the chief overseer of this facility, which we also intend to tour in order to gain greater insight into the man's work. We, I say, though this is Emmett Selk's charge. I am here only to serve as his guide. And I should be happy to serve as yours as well, by way of an apology for the misunderstanding. Wait, are you suggesting that we bring it along on official business? This thing we know next to nothing about? If you harbor suspicions, better to keep it close than leave it to its own devices. Wouldn't you agree? Having a mysterious life form in tow is the norm rather than the exception here. Welcome, my friends, to the testing ground of creation at Heaven's Edge, Elpis. What secrets are you hiding, I wonder? 